Imagine if your day went like this. I just killed hundreds of Persians, had sex with another woman betraying my wife, saw her get taken away by the devil, seeing her become the wife of the devil, seeing her make out with the devil, save her from the devil, killing all these demonic minions, including my father and brother-in-law, and now all that's left is to defeat the devil himself. Yeah, that sounds about normal. So come on, devil, what do you got for me? Okay, that may be a problem. Yep, the number five spot goes to the devil himself, Lucifer. For design-wise, he has to be my favorite out of all the creatures on this list. There's just so much de good detail in him, and to keep you guessing what he looks like in the whole game. Actually, throughout the whole game, you just see him as this dark entity shadow figure. You can't, you don't know what he truly looks like until the end of the game, where you see it before you face him. Where you see him as this tall half man, half goat thing with large horns, burning red eyes, and. He's just really, and besides, you, you have to be afraid of him. It's the devil. Man, my favorite moments with him have to be the cinematic moments, scenes with him. Because there's just so much great detail in every one of those scenes. I shall the Colossus. You know how to bring a world to life. And you can also make these creatures look realistic. And some of them could be actually scary looking. Um, for example, Argus, Zenobia, and Malice. But none of them are scary as Dirge, the tenth Colossus. First off, you have to use Agro to avoid Dirge, who's constantly chasing you around his. It can hide in the sand because it's a sand tiger. Its bite does over 75% damage to your health. But the worst part about him is his eyes. Oh god, the eyes. That's the worst part about him. And what makes it worse is that you have to look directly into the eyes because you have to shoot arrows into his eyes so he'll crash into a wall and you can do damage to him. Now, even after killing him, I still think about those eyes. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes. Yeah, yeah, we all know how Gygus got scary by his explicit contents and how it look, talks like a mental patient and how its final form it looks like a fetus. So pretty soon, Gygus won't be that scary to us. Now here's where I'm going to make it different compared to all those other people who put Gygus on their list. First off, there is more than the fetus there and only certain people can see the other hidden message there. Here it is. Now this game would be released two months after The Lion King was released to theaters, which had that subliminal message to promote sex. So the creator of Earthbound created Gygus in order to deny, deny Lion King's subliminal message by promoting abortions in order to slow down the population growth in Japan. Yeah, you heard me. Gygus was made to deny Disney's attempt to promote sex. So forget the stories of the rape trauma in the movie theater. This was the reason for Gygus to be made. Also, for me, this game released on the day of my birth, year and date, which is scary to me because if this game was released a few days before, I may have not even been born, and there's nothing more scarier than that. You know in Killing Floor, there is something far worse than the Flesh Pounder, and that is the final boss in the game, the Patriarch. The Patriarch is something that everyone in the game hides from, no matter what the situation is. It is something you do not face head on because it has a chain gun on one arm, his other arm has enough power to do over half, half health damage on his chest, is a far-reaching sucker that drags you in so he, he gets a direct attack on you. Oh, and you think that's bad? It gets worse. The Patriarch can turn invisible, and what makes this worse is that he has three health syringes, and if you don't kill him on the first time you see him, you're going to repeat the process all over again because he's going to heal himself. And don't bother calling him a pussy because he turns invisible and runs around. When you're being shot at by AA-12s, rocket launchers, and M99s, and you're still able to take all that and still whoop some ass, then you are one scary mother. <laughs>
<laughs> Alright, before the number one scariest thing in video game history is announced, let's have a quick go through the list. Number 10, Triple H and Monoculus. Number 9, Flesh Pounds. Number 8, Cerberus. Number 7, Regenerator. Number 6, Broodmother. Number 5, Lucifer. Number 4, Dirge. Number 3, Gygus. Number 2, The Patriarch. And the number one scariest thing in video game history is... This is the only thing on the list that makes me cringe in fear at the sight of it. Pandora. When it comes to making a scary monster creature thing, whatever, sometimes the simplest things can work. With, with its, like for Pandora, its multi, its form arms and legs, along with the butt for a face, it can work. But then you gotta take it to the next level. With them, they put a female's face on an enormous swelling way. That is not right. For many people, Pandora loses points on their countdowns or talks because it turns into a butterfly's next form. But who cares if it turns into a butterfly? We're talking about this thing. This is the most disturbing creature that, for me, I have ever seen in any video game I've played. And in my mind, I see the number one scariest thing in video game history. I'm the Overdrive Gamer. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go change my pants.